All right, everybody, we're back and we're in. Ghibli, are you with me? I am. What time do you have, kind sir? As I see it right at this moment, 1.22. All right. All right, so here we go on the red side. Uh, again, question mark? Nah, not a, I don't think again. Defending the Titan of Chaos, as I trip over my words. Baxters on Alquang. Defending the Titan of Order. Zoom, 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 zoom. Amuz and Cobb. Hero. Revival Gaming. XGEU. Baxters. Alquang. Let's do this. Ghibli, go. Predictions. Oh, I hate to do this. I just, I, I think Alquang is going to have it. I you wanna, think so? I want to. I do. I, Hero just needs to switch up his style. Does he need to maybe play a little bit more passively? Or even more, maybe not even passively, maybe just more aggressively early game. He has the edge early game. Yeah. ADC. He does have the edge early game. Uh, but Alquang quickly ramps up, and then those tornadoes just do work. Yeah, that's why I need to get him down early game. If he can do that, then he can start, start to snowball. You know, it's AMC. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it, easy for him to start snowballing. And he's got the idea to snowball. Like, he's got the idea in his head with the Heart Seeker and everything. But I feel like the Heart Seeker is such an all in. And then, you know, if you die about two, two, three times with Heart Seeker, which is what happened to Hero last round, it's so hard to get those stacks back. Even even in a Joust situation where you, you know, you have it all to yourself, it's still, you have to deal with the fact that there's another guy running around trying to destroy everything you've known and loved. So, yeah. That's fine. For sure, for sure. I, he, I, I think next time, it, say in this round, he starts falling behind, he starts dying a lot. I think it would be worth it to actually just sell the heart seeker, in my opinion. Yeah, I it, definitely because it starts, it be starts, small. lacking in its effort, and at that point, there becomes items that are better to get, you oh, know, yeah. for late game. I would suggest that you some run. VETs coming out. Hero actually managing to get the early XP boon, uh, off of Baxters. And level four to Baxter's is four just now, but he is a negligible amount of XP. Oh, 135 XP, 200. It's going up. He's ahead because Baxter's hasn't been able to clear the wave. So technically, at this point in time, Ghibli, Hero is able to clear a wave faster than Baxter's is. Yeah. He needs to take advantage of that. He mm -hmm. needs to keep pushing. He needs to push hard. He needs to put Baxter's back in the tower and scared for his life. Yes, he does. He needs to keep that Alquang under his tower because Alquang is is able to just push forward, throw down his tornado, and then back up. His work's already done. What does he have to worry about? Yep. So, itemization, Heart Seeker 2, like we said, sprint again, and then again, same build as last time, Vamp Shroud, choose one, um, Hand of the Gods, and then a Mana Potion. Hero's going to back... Oh, no, he's not. He catches a squall to the face while coming back around the tower. Possibly going to try and farm again since this wave is right here. He doesn't want to miss anything. Oh, a fight coming out. Squall barely... Oh, excuse me. Spirit's tip is barely missing from Baxter's. A nice dodge by Hero. But it, yeah, good he, reaction. He really just kind of made it look like he was just walking along his way as opposed to, like, dodging it. Very nicely yeah. played. Hero's going to back... Baxter's is just going to throw down a tornado in tower and continue to press wave. Hero coming back in the lane just now with his Heart Seeker stacks ready to go. He's got full Heart Seeker. And we see Baxter's wandering around taking speed camp over here while Amuz and Cobb is more concerned about his tower and ready to take that wave. For sure, you know. But now, you know, Hero can stay alive and he can just get that farm on. He's going to start. Out DPSing that Al Huang. He's gonna start out DPSing Baxter's. You yeah. know, I find it very bizarre, you know, that an Al Huang as well that has so much clear doesn't take something like Doom or a Warlock Sash as well. Yeah. I feel like it'd be really strong. Yeah, to try and keep up with the 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 snowball that AMC's trying to do. That would just that would just make AMC miserable to deal with a a, a Doom or Al Huang. That makes anybody miserable to deal with a Doom or Al Huang. Yeah, for sure. I, potentially, maybe it, they just don't feel as if it's safe to do um, in this this small, intense arena. It's not technically, it's not arena, it's joust, but I, I just call it an arena because it's a battle. Oh, yeah, AMC pops his sprint, aggressing onto Alcon, chasing him down. We see the swarm come out from him, 
and he backs off because the slither from Al Kwong, Al Kwong's two is just more than enough to get him away from Amus and Cobb. It's so slippery. Yeah. He's so slippery. However, Hero is just. He's just being able to push up the Alquan a little bit here. Yep. So he's going to get a full lane of clear. However, that Alquan, because of those camps, he is level 8, whereas Hero is level. Just hit level 8. So yep. He is out, out leveling him just a little bit. Just slightly. And do you remember what time we had first blood the last round? I do not. I think I was uh, disconnecting a whole bunch yeah. and freaking out. It was within the first five minutes, if I remember correctly. So, sorry about the camera work, guys. I was definitely not paying attention at the moment. I was thinking of something. Um, we're reaching the point now where we're starting to reach, uh, get close to where betting is going to end, that five-minute mark. And no kills within five minutes in a 1v1 Joust is pretty interesting. Yeah, Hero's definitely playing it really safe this round. He doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to lose those Heartseeker stacks. He wants to make sure that he can get his farm on. Oh, yeah. We may have an engage here, though. Mr. Squall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Alquan just gonna... Alquan didn't... Yeah, he's just going to spam those VETs and back all... back away. <laughs> he's doing a really good job of timing those uh, those buffs in the camps and everything and making it just denying Hero the possibility even saying, like, oh, this looks pretty. I want it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Hero manages to wander over and pick up a mana buff. Not sure if it was his mana buff, but a mana buff. And we see some intense clear coming out from both sides, and Baxter's is going to back. Sweet. Yep. Uh, I would have waited just maybe a little bit, because maybe by the time he gets back, minions are already cleared. Really good clear by him. He might lose a few of the creep waves here because they're going to be in the range of the tower taking damage. Yeah, yep, he's going to lose one or two. The hero's going to wander over and wait for... Oh, no, he was waiting for the, the red camp. It was down, so he just backed. Um, we're seeing Baxter's just clearing hives in lane, just hanging out, bouncing around. He's got a speed buff. He's a doodle. You know, what more is there to it? <laughs> he's a happy noodle. He is a happy noodle indeed. And we're seeing some poke coming out again, tornado, and then the honey, and the swarm actually lands on the Baxters. But this is just poke. There's no real intent to kill here. It's just testing for weaknesses. Oh, squall yeah, coming sure. down, oh. and a spirits tempest again. I talk way too soon. Stinger landing on the Baxters. The swarm misses. He's trailing the venom from the stinger, but it just takes him to half health, and the stinger drops. And AMC pressures again with more honey, or honey, excuse me. But uh. Not much happening. Just you know, there there was definitely intent to kill with that poke, but the uh, the execution left a bit more to be desired. Let's take a quick look at uh, what we have as far as our gold difference. We're sitting on top of 245 gold difference at a 797 XP difference in favor of Baxters. Again, he's starting to pick up. He's starting to pull away from Amuz and Cobb, and when that happens on an Alquan, that's very bad for AMC Ghibli. It is. However, Hero hasn't died, and he's he's starting to get to that point as well, where he's clearing the wave really quickly, and those Heartseeker stacks are going to reach full suit, and he's going to start doing damage. Like, and not to mention, he's the one thing I noticed through Hero and how he's playing, he has an incredibly fast reaction time. Like, right there, he got hit by Squall. He had already popped Sprint, and he was out of the way of the Tornado. Oh, hold on. We got to engage here. The Sprint again, dodging the ulti oh, yeah. from Ao Kong. Barely. But he manages to do it. It was funny because you were just talking about that, and then it happened again. And I was like, is yeah. he ahead of me? But no. No. <laughs> that's that's funny, though. Um, Baxter's just running, wandering over, taking the red camp. But um, definitely, definitely playing it way safer this round. His early game aggression paid off in the last round where he was able to actually get some kills. But the thing was, like, he, car he tried to carry the aggression further through the game instead of choosing when to back off after a certain point and that's what started to get him killed but this round everybody's playing passive it seems um we're seven almost eight minutes in and we have yet to see first blood that's true yeah first blood it has not happened yet we do see a book of thoth coming out from the alquam oh yeah that scares me a little bit as well because he's gonna start snowballing and he links in directly with his passive Mm -hmm. And like I, I, I like the Book of Thoth because, 
like we saw it last time, clearly he's got it in his mind to snowball, but it's a very safe sort of snowball. It's a very reliable yeah. snowball. It's not like Doom or Heartseeker, which Doom Orb and Heartseeker are essentially the same thing, just one is um, physical base, the other is magical base in terms of damage. Um, you know, with the Doom Orb, you're, you're out Quag. Yes, you, the damage makes up for the potential squishiness, but it's a 1v1 joust. You gotta play it safe. And that's what Baxter's is doing, and it's working for him. He's pulled ahead in farm now. Uh, 271 gold ahead and 952 experience ahead, and just clearing buff camps like it's nothing. Yep. However, he did just lose a full wave of creeps yeah, to the he tower. Did. He did he lose got a, full a camp, wave. but he, a full wave, that's that's a lot of XP and a lot of gold. Uh huh. No. Excuse me. We'll um, see, we'll see. That that could that could harm him right there. Yep. Pretty badly. AMC just clearing the jungle a little bit and then gonna back Baxter's throws a tornado down and then just strolls off through the jungle, looking for something to do again. Speeds up, like why not go. do it? Why not? It's it's an XP grind. Ooh, AMC coming back just in time so he doesn't lose too much XP. Uh-huh. Just maybe a creep here or there. But we are seeing I we see an Aussie coming out as well, so we're gonna have some Life steal coming out from the AMC. Bit of life steal, bit of pin, bit of attack speed, which is really deadly on AMC, let alone any ADC. Um, Baxter is back in lane with his speed buff, AMC buffless, but he's just gonna clear the wave like it's nothing. Uh, misses the squall, or not misses, but the squall was actually juked quite nicely by Hero. Oh, here comes Hero. He's trying to fight. Tries to throw down the honey, but his hive was taken out just before, so you're not gonna see any bees covering the honey. And Baxter's backs off because he just doesn't have. He's got some mana, but the mana he has is better used for farming in this situation, which is why he backed off instead of trying to contend with the AMC. And Baxter's is just gonna back. He's got a gold on a, or excuse me, a level on AMC. Why, why chance it? Yeah, Book of Thoth is done, and we also see Polynomicon starting out. This is. He's getting to that point in his build where he's going to start doing so much damage. He's going to start hurting and smirting and just, oh, it's going to be terrible. Especially when uh, AMC finally decides, feels as if he, personally, is farmed enough to handle a tussle. And then he's going to get smacked by the Polynomicon. Yeah, that Polynomicon. I mean, I play a lot of mages and I, that's my favorite item. Yeah. Here he is. I don't know what they're doing. He's just kind of looking for him. It's a lot, a lot about camps here. He's like, oh man, you know, orange is up. Let's go. But AMC already on top of it. Good oh, yeah. counting. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very surprised to see this mage care so much about speed buffs. Again, we, I've seen multiple mages over, the, over my courses today. They all have cared so much about speed buff. Uh, to the point where um, Al Kong actually popped his sprint to try and make it there in time. You see his squall land on AMC. They're trying to get a duel going here. He misses a tornado. Spirit's Tempest coming out. First blood with the Polynomicon going to Al Kong. Ooh. Good ulti. Uh huh. By Max is there. That, just you, good timing, good positioning. Oh, just very, very fluid, too. That Polynomicon sure. hit after the last. Uh, after the ulti, he ulted and then he used the Polynomicon hit auto attack to clean it up. That was just slick. So, yeah. right here we have um, the Titan of Order. Her tower is taking quite a bit of uh, archer damage. And unfortunately, Hero is still on cooldown. He died uh, about 11 minutes in. So, that means his cooldown is going to be quite long. And he just now respawned. And he can't keep existing like this. You know, now he has to fight on the back foot. He thought he could maybe finally tussle with Al Kwong. Turns out he was completely wrong. Um, what do you think of the Winged Wand giveaway? I was just looking at that. I find that really bizarre. It's I, not my favorite item, in all honesty. Really? Not my favorite item. Uh, it has a lot of potential. It's just... Like, pretty much, the problem with Winged Wand is that its effect is on a 30 second cooldown and most abilities are on like a 12 second cooldown or less that it's basically built for. Like Al Kwong Tornado or Poseidon Whirlpool. Those are the two things I can think of off the top of my head that you pretty much build uh, 
what am I thinking of? Uh, oh god, I literally have it right in front of me. Wing and Wand. Those are the two reasons you build Wing and Wand for. And they're both on a lower cooldown than the special effect for Winged Wand, so... Oh, wow. Spirit's Tempest out. He tried to hit him with a Tornado Squall Spirit's Tempest combo, but AMC sidesteps it and then sprints back into base. Alquan manages to take the middle tower and is pressing for the Phoenix. Yeah, he could possibly take out the Phoenix here if he plays it correctly. Oh, yeah. And if AMC uh, messes up a little bit. But it looks like AMC will be back in time. He's going to go in for some damage. Here's the ulti. He lands it, but... Just not out. enough. He's done. That's just not enough because uh, Baxter's is too far ahead. Yeah. Now you see there, the Alquan put his tornado on top of his stinger. Really smart play. You know, he loses what one creep to the tower. Not a huge deal, but he denies the short cooldown of the ulti to the AMC. Really smart idea. Yeah, that's actually like you say, brilliant play by uh, Alquan. If AMC picks up his stinger, you know. His ultimate is a stinger. It does a lot of damage. It cripples people, preventing them from moving or using movement abilities. Excuse me while I mess that phrase up. And it slows them and it disorients them, kind of like a light Bacchus drunk. But uh, the main thing about it is that it falls off of the opponent after a certain amount of time. And if they're able to pick up that stinger within the, the allotted amount of time, that puts the stinger on a 15 second cooldown. If you don't pick it up, it's on a 90 second cooldown like every other, or excuse me, most other ultimates in the game. We're seeing a fight pop off here between Al Kwong and AMC. Throws down a tornado after landing a squall. AMC throws down some honey in retaliation while standing next to his Phoenix guarding. Nothing really going to happen here. Just Al Kwong again poking at the Phoenix with his Polynomicon and warding off AMC with a tornado. Oh wow, some poke. Ooh, good slow. AMC. Not enough. Yeah, AMC managing to actually land a bit of poke on the Alquang, but Alquang is like, ah, I'm okay, I'll be fine. Just let my soldiers keep pushing. Yeah, so Winged One is done. AM AMC is, yeah, got some execution here. Very interesting, more attack speed. I would have gone, in all honesty, for some magical defense. Oh, Phoenix down. Phoenix down indeed. No revives here until much, much later. Um, if I was AMC, um, there is the potential. I'm sorry, I'm quite tired. My throat, my throat is actually starting to close up, as odd as that sounds. Hang on. Okay, there we go. I had some water. Um, if I was AMC, sorry for the camera work, guys, again. If I was Amuz and Cobb, I would actually try to be building um, a little bit more damage. Because Executioner is fantastic. Oh, wow. Why did he ulti there? Baxter just blows his ulti for no reason. Manages to kill one minion. I guess that minion must have really pissed him off. So, you know, I guess it was worth it. But uh, Executioner does quite a lot of damage. And it's got that, that pin that will help out against the Breastplate of Valor. But... I think more damage, like Deathbringer and some Rage for the attack speed would have done him a little bit more good, especially with the Phoenix bearing down on, um, yeah. excuse me, the uh, Fire Minions bearing down on his destroyed Phoenix. Agreed. And we have Rod being finished on Baxter's here, and he's selling his Vampire Shroud, and he's actually picking up a ward. Oh, yeah. He placed so... a ward right in the middle of the map. Uh, too good. Right in the middle of the map. By the way, those new wards look super sexy. Oh, dude, I know. I was like, oh, rest in peace, old wards. But man, these new wards, though. Like, why do I even have to be sad when I have these things? Uh, <laughs> they're pretty awesome. Baxter's just playing the game the way it's meant to be played. Pushing, pushing, pushing. At the end of the day, despite the kills and everything, it is an objective game, which is clearly seen by Baxter's play. He's only got one kill, and he used that kill to take objectives. AMC needs to be really careful here. He, uh, the ult, oh, wow. Both ultis are up. Both ultis are up. This is looking like another duel. AMC pops sprint trying to get Baxter's low and manages to actually kill him with a stinger, but the spirit's tempest from Alquang right before he dies kills Hero at the same time. So they wow. killed each other. They killed each other, but Hero is at the disadvantage for the sole fact that he's dead while fire minions are beating on his titan. Yeah, they do a ton of damage too. Yeah, fire minions hurt. People don't really realize that until 
they're trying to fight them and they're just trying to clear them and they're taking archers and they're at yellow health and they're just like wait what happened and look at these fire minions right now just clearing the minions right now those those uh front melee minions barely took any damage heroes up yep. in 10 seconds baxters in 14 and the minions are just pounding away on the titan it's almost at 50 percent on minions alone yeah, this is bad. Really good idea to ulti there at the end. Oh, you yeah. know, from Baxter. Um, oh. Bold move. It's a bold move, Cotton. Bold move, Cotton, indeed. And, uh, uh, excuse me, that you actually throw me off with the bold move, Cotton. Hero actually, tr <laughs> he respawns, re manages to save his Titan. Not that it was in extreme danger, but it was in quite a bit of peril. And... Right as he's pushing out of his base, his phoenix goes down again. So now he's got fire minions still tearing down his lane. He's going to have to babysit his titan. It's not looking good for Euro. Let's take a look at the, the spread real quick. 2,000 gold difference in favor of Bax, Baxer, Baxers. I completely... Wow, I need to quit after this. And a 2,500 experience difference in his favor. With fire minions pushing down, Polynomiquang, and he's got mid-guardian male to completely screw over AMC. Not only, and you don't see Midgardian Mel that often, let me talk about it. 350 health, 60 physical protection. That's not the big clincher. The clincher for Midgardian Mel, when hit by a basic attack, there's a 30% chance to slow your enemy's movement and attack speeds. And there's the ulti, and there's the game. Congratulations to Hero. He just presses into the, or wow, so sorry. Congratulations to Baxters. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Congratulations to Baxters. He just ults the Titan at the end and takes it out. GG. No re. Very, very easy victory.